Hey everyone, Rob here, and I got some updates on what's going on here in Iceland related to the eruption which is going on near the Blue Lagoon, and it's been going on uh, on and off basically for months. Uh, seismic activity since November, and of course we have eruptions in the sort of Reykjanes Peninsula area for years, and there is no sign of slowing down and no sign of stoppage yet. Now the eruption at the Sundnuk sort of area continues and like since april 5th it's just one crater which we can see an image here from visit point dot is uh, and this is all a short distance east of sunchnuk and this is of course active lava flows a short distance from the south of the crater to an open lava river but further than that in closed channels the part of the lava bed near the defenses to the east of grindavik continues to slowly thicken if we take a look here which is an image from the meteorological agency's webcam taken at 4 30 this morning shortly before sunrise and you can see how it's uh well first day of summer was yesterday in iceland and so it's getting brighter every day now the camera here is located on top of thorpjörn and looks northeast towards the crater but uh let's talk about land rise here we got a image and, and graph here. So land rise in the Svartsangi area continues at the same rate as models predict that the amount of magma added to the magma chamber in Svartsangi since the eruption began on March 16th and is now approaching 10 million meters cubic as the graph here is showing. In previous events, the magma has flowed from Svartsangi when between 8 to 13 million meters cubic have been added to the magma chamber since the previous one. So if we we're taking a look at this graph, if you're just tuning in, it's the first time you're seeing this, all of these shapes at the end of these colorful lines are some sort of event. And we have the legend up at the top showing the dates. So we have, of course, the purple, which represents uh, the October 25th to November 9th of last year. Uh, and that purple one here is square signifies that it was some sort of seismic event you know like earthquakes or some some sort of magma move, movement but no eruption the ones with stars however those all ended up with an eruption and what we're seeing here is this line represents how much buildup essentially uh, happened underneath the ground in these magma chambers before the event happened where we are right now is this one right here at the far right at the bottom, this red one. Uh, and as you can see, it has surpassed the previous one that was, uh, yeah, back in, in March. And you can see it was uh, March 15th. That's that one there. And then, uh, of course, we're approaching, I think I think we've surpassed this, this light blue. Uh, and we're getting towards this orange yellow kind of color as it builds up. So this is why they're so concerned about another event being triggered is because the buildup is still going on despite the fact that uh, there's an eruption ongoing. And the reason that this is all happening, uh, they think, is because the output of the lava from the actual eruption is not as much or going out as quickly as the magma going into the chamber is filling it up. So that's what's increasing the pressure. Uh, so that graph shows the estimated amount of magma that has been added in the area um, basically since November 2023. Now, if magma accumulation continues at a similar rate, they say there's a greater chance that the power of the eruption on the Sundnux crater series will increase significantly. New fissures open in the area between Skogafelt and Hagafelt and or an existing fissure expands due to the sudden increase in lava flow uh, that could be comparable to the initial phase of the volcanic eruption that happened previously. And it could happen with very little to no notice. It's also possible that magma flow from the magma chamber under Svartsengi to the Suntonux crater series will gradually increase until there is a balance between the inflow of magma into the magma chamber and the outflow from that to the surface. It's also possible that there's going to be a magma run that ends with a new fissure opening somewhere else in the area between Storoskogfeld and Hagfeld. Uh, but they say this scenario is considered less likely than the others, uh, and it would be accompanied by considerable seismic activity and deformation with more advanced notice than previous eruptions. Now, what that means is, if we're looking back at this webcam, this area that they've highlighted, 
that's kind of the area that they think something's going to happen. And if it's going to happen somewhere outside of this area, that's what they say is going to need uh, a lot more seismic activity and a lot more notice than, than what we've been seeing previously. Uh, here's a very interesting image. Now, on Wednesday, April 24th, experts from the Meteorological Agency carried out measurements of gas emissions from the eruption. And what we're looking at is a image from space, uh, from the Sentinel 5P, and this is showing the sulfur dioxide concentration levels in Iceland. And you can see, based on that red, it's quite high in the area of the eruption. Um, now, the Meteorological Agency again carried out measurements, and it is estimated that six to nine kilograms per second of uh, yeah, sulfur dioxide is coming out, but in the last measurement made two weeks ago on April 12th, the gas emission was estimated at 10 to 18. So it seems like it's going down a little bit, but they say there's no evidence that is, you know, bringing gas emissions from the eruptions up. Uh, but while the eruption continues, of course, the flow of sulfur dioxide can vary greatly from day to day. And that's perhaps what they were seeing in these measurements. And we saw that before as the previous eruptions at Fagresfeth. Uh, but there's still, of course, a risk of gas pollution in the area around the crater, as well as settlements and, and cities, towns, whatever you want to call them, on the Reykjanes Peninsula. And the Meteorological Agency is advising people in the area to monitor the air quality and learn about, you know, the reaction of air pollution on your body and to people from the volcanic eruption. Again, this is an image showing the, the pollution levels there. If we take a look at the, uh, again, weather.is, which is the Meteorological Agency's website, they now have a forecast for pollution levels and you can see here um, we can scrub through we see some pollution levels so saturday which is tomorrow the pollution level apparently spikes and goes quite high sort of offwards uh, in direction the one thing i will note is uh that's the direction of the blue lagoon so the blue lagoon is just to the left of the eruption according to this map and so that's what it is there. And as of April 24th, the Blue Lagoon has said that uh, they are open. And they are opening and closing all the time. But uh, the 24th, they say that they are open. So I'm not sure if they will be closed tomorrow due to the high levels of sulfur dioxide, the SO2, that's in the atmosphere and blowing towards the Blue Lagoon. Uh, but we also have here from lofgaidi.is, so it's L-O-F-T-G-A-E-D-I.is. This here is showing the SO2 levels, uh, and you can, when you go here, you can click on the areas that you can measure. Uh, these are the current and previous levels, and if we go to the graph, we can see here the concentration levels uh, spiked up earlier in the morning, dropped down considerably, and now we're seeing them pick back up, and that's probably due to this increase that we're seeing so we can see here the pollution was going down towards the south and now it's moving along with the wind to the west and uh, I expect to see that reflected here so we have a station here right beside the blue lagoon which is this one here so if you're headed to blue lagoon let me know <laughs> let me know if they're closed tomorrow because uh, all signs point to that uh, they should be closing but you never know. So I think that's pretty much it for the news. Uh, we can take one quick look before we sort of end this little portion here at the seismic activity in the Reykjanes Peninsula. And if you were following up to the previous eruption, or I guess the current eruption, if you will, we noticed very little seismic activity, very low, less than magnitude of one, for a consistent period of time before it just snapped and it erupted. So we are seeing a similar pattern now of just stable micro turbulence, I guess, if you will, uh, with little clusters being formed in various areas. And these little clusters are kind of normal. If we take a look at another area of Iceland, 
Now we have Mivat here, not quite as much. If we look at Vat and Yokel, where we've seen a lot more seismic activity in you know, the past week or two, again, not so much. So we're really seeing a lot of activity in the area where it's expected, uh, of course, in the Reykjanes Peninsula. And only time is going to tell if all of this buildup is going to lead to a second eruption happening at the exact same time as the first. So definitely stay tuned for that. If you're flying in, don't worry about that. Maybe worry about if you're going to go to the Blue Lagoon. But we have great other spa slash geothermal places here. Sky Lagoon, Kramsvik, Secret Lagoon, you know, you name it. Local pools. Go somewhere else, uh, especially if you have uh, an issue with pollution or, uh, you know, respiratory problems. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening, and uh, I hope you find it useful. If you're going to the Blue Lagoon and you know it's closed, put something in the chat uh, or in the comments, if you will, and uh, let everyone else know what's going on so that they can plan accordingly as well. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching.